Hello and welcome to our Technology Tuesday session uh, on encryption on Stallways V7000. So first of all, we'll just take a look at the schedule for upcoming sessions that we've got. Uh, so later on today, we've got uh, governance, risk and compliance, and we've got a few more scheduled so far to the end of March. So first of all, the Storewise V7000, um, if you're not aware about it, then we've done some sessions previously on it, uh, all available on our YouTube channel. But roughly, it's uh, a mid-range storage device, and it can come in a SAN or a NAS solution. Uh, storage virtualization and external virtualization, so what that means is that your existing storage, it can sort of manage that and give all its advanced functionality to the disks you've already got. Easy tier, we've done a session on that. So that's taking the data which is accessed most frequently and putting it onto SSD. Uh, Real-time compression, uh, able to get up to 50%, in fact, above 50%, guaranteed 50% space savings. And just to highlight, it's been around for a while. It's uh, software version seven and hardware generation version two. So the Storewise V7000 is actually part of the Storewise family. There's a V3700 and a V5000 as well. You can see the differences here. Um, basically, it's about how far it can scale. But the V7 is the only one which can do compression and encryption. And we've got lots of customers here using Storewises. Um, as you see, councils, healthcare, schools, uh, legal companies, financial companies. So we've got lots of people out there already using it, so you know it's a reliable platform. So let's take a look at the encryption. So why do we need encryption? Well, primarily it's for compliance. Um, if you regulated, uh, maybe PCI, uh, requirement three is all about encryption um, or PSN, something like that. Uh, it also obviously increases your security. Uh, this could be marketed as a competitive advantage. It's dependent on obviously your, your business. Uh, you might not be regulated, but you might use it to, to show that you're better than, than other people. And it can potentially reduce operating costs. Um, brackets here called this warranty. So um, if you're in an industry where you need to keep hold of your data. Then in a failure in a warranty situation, traditionally what happens is you get a new disk, but you want to keep your disk because you're not allowed to give that data away. So that has a higher uplift, a higher charge for that. So yeah, these sort of devices from any manufacturer will come with standard sort of warranty, which basically means if you've got a failed hard disk, you've got to send that back to them and then they'll send you a new one. Uh, so if you need to keep hold of it, there's an additional charge on it. So by encrypting it, you don't need to keep hold of it because they can't read it anyway. So you can you can actually save some money on your ongoing cost of maintenance there. So just to be clear, we're talking about um, encryption at rest. So that means it's encrypted and decrypted by the controller. When it's actually sitting on the disks, it's encrypted. It's decrypted when it moves across the SAN. Uh, and it uses standard AES 256-bit encrypted keys. Uh, and just the standard sort of way that you'd expect it to behave. It's a public algorithm. The only secrets are the keys. Key management is built into the V7000. Um, so it takes care of all that for you. There is a statement of direction saying that they will make it available to, to plug into the IBM Key License Manager as well. But um, if you don't have that, it's nice and easy to maintain the keys because V7 does it all fine. Keys are stored on USB drives, which plug into the back of the controller. Uh, encryption is enabled at the pool level, so if you don't know much about the Storewise family. Basically, you have a pool of disks, and they will be made up of um, 
reader reads and your encryption is switched on and off at that level and that can have multiple volumes in it. So the reason it's done at the pool level is so that things like your your easy tier will continue to work. So easy tier has got you know some SSD disks and some spinning disks all in the same place and the data can move around between it. So when the data is moving around it's still encrypted. And it goes on to my last point there. Encryption works with all other features. So the easy tier, the compression, um, it continues to work with uh, no degradation. Okay, so I got another couple of points here. So it's with uh, any disks or flash disks, I want a better word, in the controller. Yeah, so they're the standard disks. So you don't need to purchase um, self-encrypting drives, so you know, saving a bit of money there as well, potentially. Uh, it is only for the disks actually in the controllers, so nothing externally virtualized. Okay, so an actual V7000 controller uh, and the expansion units. But if, for example, you're using your V7 to manage uh, an EMC, uh, those EMC disks uh, can't be encrypted as it stands just now. Again, there is a statement uh, in the statement of direction that says that they will all be put in encryption on external virtualization to come. Okay, so how does it work? Basically, you get this uh, master key required to boot effectively to make the system work at all. And that's stored on USB on the back and control. Uh, you then get a, a data key as well. It's one parent encrypted array. And that's stored in memory, a secure area in memory, and also as a copy of it on the master key. So if you order the V7000 with encryption, uh, it comes with two parts. One is the actual license key, and then there's a pack of USB keys as well. You can just uh, add this onto your existing V7, so you can buy a V7 and then purchase your encryption later on. A couple of caveats is that it's got to be the Gen 2 hardware, um, and you would need to be the latest code level, but you can upgrade that for free. So one of the things that you will need to decide is what operational mode you want to be in. Uh, so there's two of them, basically. Uh, one is that you have the USB keys stuck at the back of the control. Uh, and the other is that you've got them in a secure location elsewhere. Okay, so um, a lot of this is down to your strategy, uh, your business requirements, etc., etc. So let's get a look at that first one there. Um, the drives are always installed. Uh, you're going to have the USBs in the back, so you want to make sure that your data center is secure. Okay. Um, beyond standard sort of security, I would say. So a lot of people maybe have, you know, a, a, a key code to get into the data center. You would want to have um, accountability on this. So you'd want to have everybody to have separate ways to get into the data center and um, so you'd know exactly who's been in and, and who's done what of course you might actually want that on, on the rack as well uh, failing that then you would have your usb disks in a secure location in a safe or something like that and the problem with that is that it delays a restart a little bit because obviously uh, you'll have to go and get the usbs out of the safe and then bring them along. Uh, it's not a controller failover, it, it's a full restart. So um, maybe you want to have a rethink about, you know, is speed critical of a reset or anything like that? Uh, that again, it comes down to your overall strategy. So it's relatively easy to implement. Um, Wizard, excellent. Uh, command line as well. And ultimately what happens is we put the USB keys in and it writes the keys and just kind of kicks on off. Relatively cheap. Um, so list price of £4,000 to add encryption. But the thing you do need to think about is policies, procedures, strategies, risk and compliance. Okay, so security isn't a point solution. And encryption isn't something that you just switch on. You need to think quite deeply about it. You know, um, you need to have some sort of policy backing up those keys and keeping them safe and things. 
because if you lose those keys, you can't access your data. Game over. Okay, and security in a whole, it's, it's not just about IT or about technology. It's about the business. It's about governance. It's about risks. You know, you need to be looking at uh, the people, the data, the applications, the infrastructure. And we're not just talking IT there as well. You know, we're talking about um, all people in your company. Have they been trained? Um, are they aware of risk? Uh, the infrastructure as well, you know, it might just be like locks on doors and things like that. So it's important to have a have an overriding um, view of your security. And uh, luckily, CERT can help with that. So we've got several assessments if you don't know where to start or where you're at or what steps you should take next or uh, where you'd get the biggest win. Then we have some services where we can come along and we can engage with you and work out where you're at and where you need to be and start moving you along there. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Uh, nice short one this week. Uh, if you uh, want to follow us, and remember it's hashtag technology Tuesday. Um, we've got a YouTube channel, which is Cedric Video. Um, or if you just uh, search within YouTube for Cedric Systems, you should be able to find us as well. All right, thank you very much.